So the starting point of working on the snap-on Varus is pulling off these rubber side covers. Okay, from the top, you've got one, two, three screws on this side, one, two, three screws on this side through the warranty is void if open sticker. Obviously, if you still have a warranty on yours, let snap-on fix it. If uh, you know what you're doing, then uh, let's go. Then you've got, I think it was six screws back here. One, two, three in this spot. Let's see. Four, five, and there's one just under the battery opening here. Just pull the battery out, it's right in there. Right in there. They're all fine thread Phillips screws. And that's how you start opening the case. Once you have all the screws out, this black trim piece will come off. And then you'll have to work on getting the screen out, which I'll show you next. Okay, so now at this stage, there are five clips on the top and five clips on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to try and demonstrate just getting one of these clips out. They are difficult. Okay, so a flat blade screwdriver actually worked better, even a little more strength. I was able to get that first one loose. So now you can see there's a little bit of play there, okay? So now you just work your way down the next five on the top. Then I got two loose. Okay, so just keep working that. The next three on the top, five on the bottom. Okay, it's important that you take this shroud off because um, there's a very fine cable that attaches this screen to the motherboard underneath. And you can't just take apart these two sections without actually destroying the cable and ripping it off the motherboard, which would obviously be a disaster. Um, I only learned that because I was carefully taking apart these two pieces, and I realized I couldn't quite get into anything, and I could see that ribbon. It's not really a ribbon cable, it's similar, going to the motherboard. Um, so I'm going to keep working this off here, um, and then I'll show you the different connectors. There's actually, um, this cable connects underneath this board, underneath this foil tape, there's a plug that's going to have to get disconnected. There you go. It'll have to get disconnected. So now I have all these clips loosened on this shroud all the way around. So this buttons, these buttons can just get tucked over to the side gently for right now. This, uh, this upper shroud here will come up on this side, but you can't just pull it off. Okay. You're going to have to come around here. This tape has to get peeled back. It peels back two different directions. This cord pulls straight out. And now you can open this up ever so gently because there's cords underneath there that also have to get unplugged. So, there's one that has to get disconnected. This one's tricky to reconnect. You just need some patience. Because they don't give you a lot of room to work on this part. When you're using this pick tool in here, just be super, super gentle. There's traces in here, and this plastic is not, um, might be a little bit brittle. So just take your time. Um, if you don't have either the patience or the light touch for some of this, I would not recommend it, because um, the work is kind of fine work here. And as we all know, if you're watching this video, this is an expensive device. Don't want to destroy it. So, now we can use Pick tool again, push this over, and that releases that cable for us. Put the control buttons, and that comes out. Put that in a safe place. Uh, let's see here. So now, this is where things get real touchy. So this was the cable I was telling you about. So if you try and separate this thing at that red between the red and the black plastic, it's not going to work because it's going to rip this this whole thing. So that's why you have to take it apart the way I showed you um, so you can actually get to what you need to get to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to disconnect this plug to release that ribbon cable. Again, nice and easy. A little gentle shove. I don't want to damage these things. And I'll lay it back down carefully. And now, this plug 
can actually pull straight out. That's what you're looking at. Now the screen is totally detached. <clears throat> so if your issue is the screen, uh, you can get yourself a new screen. That's the screen process, okay? <clears throat> All my screws are removed right now because um, I'm kind of doing this backwards. Um, but you'll find several screws throughout here that will have to get taken out. So now, I can gently pull up on this. Again, watch that cable. And pull this out. Now, you want to move it up like this. Because you have your Wi-Fi antennas attached to the back of this. Um, and I didn't get deep enough to try and disconnect these Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, if you really want to, uh, you can pull them out of this plastic panel. Uh, it seemed like kind of a pain in the ass, so I didn't do that. I just let it be right there. So the main problem that this unit had when I opened it uh, for a friend was a DC power jack was broken. Okay? There's supposed to be a third leg there where that little crack is. There's supposed to be a third leg right there. And it was actually broken and uh, seized in the board. But it was broken clean here. So it would barely ever make contact, but if he wiggled it hard enough, he could get some power to it. So I took the time to research the, uh, a similar part on Mauser.com, uh, electronic supply house. They come up with a lot of, um, a lot of parts. I took the measurements and found this part here. Uh, this is very similar, but not identical. Um, and the reason why it's not identical is these legs, as they go through the board, are a little bit shorter. Okay, so instead of coming all the way through the board um, and poking through the board, these legs actually kind of come flush with the board or maybe slightly through the board, just enough so you can get some solder on them. So this is with the new plug in place. Okay, and I'll give you that part number uh, for this plug uh, in case that's what you're looking to do. I'm not going to walk you through the soldering on this. Um, because it's definitely fine soldering and this is obviously uh, not a beginner's project uh, as far as not the first soldering job you want to do um, there's not a lot of margin for error so once you're this far uh, there were some screws here in a couple of these different places I don't remember exactly where uh, all of them were but some of these had screws in them <clears throat> so now in order to get this board out to service that port or anything else you want to service, there's a couple more fasteners deep in here. So the Let's see if I can get this to work here. Inside this port, there's these two bolts on the end here. These are actually helping to hold the board in place. So those have to come out. So I'll pull those out, and then I'll show you uh, a good way to get that entire board loose. So my approach to getting this board loose, because a lot of these plugs actually come through this plastic shroud, was to use a flat blade screwdriver and bend this just ever so gently and get these popped out. So I'm going to use two hands for it, but that was the way I was able to get it to work. Um, just be careful what you're prying on. Um, use some caution. Okay, I got the main board out now. And... It gives you pretty good access to everything inside. You got your hard drive here. You got a cooling fan. I'm assuming that's a main processor. Um, you can disconnect this wire if you need to. I didn't bother. Um, that'll give you pretty much access to anything you might want to and might not want to ever have to service. So, hopefully, this will. Uh, help somebody service this thing if they need to. I know the service thing is pretty expensive. If you have some soldering skills, you can get to that jack and you'll be all right.